In today's video, you're going to be seeing my lean bulk physique update, epic entertainment, fat loss tips, some workout footage, and how my strength is progressing. Awesome. First of all, a joke. Okay. A man goes up to his mate at the gym and asks him, what's your current exercise routine? The guy's mate responds with, I lift weights. Then the guy asks again, what do you do for cardio? The guy's mate answers with, I lift weights faster. <laughs> Okay, it's not my best, but I'm trying to get better at those jokes. The time is 3.24 a.m. and dinner consists of chicken breast, mandarin beans, carrots, white potato, and baby corn and I've topped the chicken off with Italian herbs and I'm gonna be having my chocolate rice cakes and stuff on the side but I will show you all of that properly thoroughly in a full day of eating so one of you can help me as well because I've kind of lost my voice I'm trying to find it if anybody's seen it let me know in the comments section below 3 25 a.m. and the next thing you're gonna see is my workout footage from the next morning and I'll bring you back for my lean bowl physique update <laughs> Hello, hello. I hope you enjoyed the joke that I included at the start of the video. A lot of thought went behind that joke. And I'm sorry about this husky voice. Basically, I've lost my voice and I'm trying to get it back. But I'm just trying to master how this one sounds. Because I think it sounds pretty cool. And it's a lot lower than what my voice tone usually sounds like. So it sounds a bit more like a man, in my opinion, I think. Anyway, in this first voiceover, I'm going to be talking about the benefits of resistance training in a fat loss program because people on social media and in YouTube comment sections have been telling me about how they've they've questioned about why can't they just lose weight by just doing cardio and eating less than they need. But then I educate them about why they need resistance training and also refeed days, how they're essential to maintaining muscle mass and not achieving a skinny fat physique. So when I talk about um, toning up, when people ask about toning up, sorry, they actually are saying that they would like to have a, a significant amount of muscle mass on them when they get lean so they don't adopt this skinny fat physique where somebody looks healthy and they look lean but when they take their shirt off they still have a lot of adipose fat around the abdomen area so they have fat around um, the abs which is just above the waistline where the belly button is just in case anybody doesn't know what I'm referring to when I say abdomen and you find that you can still grab a lot of fat in that area and that's usually just because people have adopted a diet where you're eating significantly less than you need, doing a lot of cardiovascular exercise, so a lot of excess calories are being expended and you're actually sacrificing a lot of muscle mass. So that's why resistance training is needed in order to have that muscle mass on your body and help you get lean. But having a muscle mass on your body will also help to increase the amount of calories you need per day to maintain your weight because calories are needed to maintain muscle. So because what I've found is that um, over across the four years and a bit that I've been doing resistance training for, my maintenance has significantly increased. Obviously, I've been doing bulking phases and cutting phases, but to maintain my weight at the moment, I'm estimating it'll be around 3,650 calories per day, but I'm on a lean bulk phase, so I'm having around 3,900 calories per day. Whereas people on the average person who just does cardiovascular exercise and remains fit, they need roughly 2,000 to 2,500 calories so what I'm saying is when you resist, have resistance training in your life, um, even if that's just one or two days a week compared to what I do, which is seven days a week, you will be able to increase the amount of calories you need to maintain your weight and it'll be easier to um, sustain your body weight in the long run. And therefore, you can still go out to eat and do all the things you love to do whilst having a healthy lifestyle. Doing resistance training will also protect yourself against metabolic diseases such as hypertension, diabetes, strokes and cardiovascular disease i should oh, i should note sorry with this voiceover i won't be covering all the benefits just some of them in this list i've got in front of me but if you're interested in hearing about all of them then i'll direct you towards my recent instagram and facebook post um i'll have my instagram um on the screen for you right now if you want to go and follow me on there um resistance training improves bone and joint health so if you find that you're say a runner and you've got the right shoe you're doing a good 
running program where you're being very careful about not doing too many excess miles across a whole week but you're still finding you have niggles perhaps in the it band iliotibial band syndrome is very common amongst runners then that is probably and you're not doing resistance training at this point it's probably because you just need to strengthen the joints increase the muscle mass around the knee joint area so i'm talking about um increasing the strength and the I'm talking about hypertrophies and growing the muscle of the calf, the soleus, the gastrocnemius, which are the calf muscles, the hamstring, the quadriceps and how they're broken down. All those muscles that are inserted to the knee joint, as you strengthen them and build them up, that will really help protect you against injury in the future and will increase your longevity of your running career. So that is one aspect of why you should incorporate resistance training with running as a specific sport. But this will tie over into a lot of different sports. And Again, increasing muscle mass over time will help increase the calories you need, will increase the calories you need to maintain your weight. It will significantly reduce lower back pain for sure. Although people get a little bit worried about feeling back pain after deadlifts in a delayed onset of muscle soreness way, and that's just because you've been using the muscle groups, helping improve your back muscles over time will help align the spine, keep it in a, a nice, good alignment, and help reduce the lower back pain you may experience when you're not. Um, doing resistance training. Hope this helped though guys. Enjoy the rest of the video. In this portion of the video, I'm going to be actually assessing my physique and telling you what bits I need to improve on in regards to my CrossFit training. And if I was to look at my physique as a bodybuilder and a physique athlete. But at the moment, roughly I'm weighing about 74, 75 kilos in the morning and again, increasing my calories by 100 every month. Across the Christmas period, I had five days where I was slightly more out of control of my calorie intake. It's not that I'm doing like weighing it gram for gram um, with my calories and my food, but that meant I just increased my calories rather than the 10th of January on the 15th of January. So I'm going to be Increasing my calories again on the February the 15th, and that will take me up to 4,000 calories per day alongside the training program. I'm doing seven days a week along and with my running as well. But as you saw, if we're looking specifically at my chest area, my pecs, my left pec is significantly um, bigger than my right pec, in my opinion. Obviously, you can leave me your opinions in the YouTube description. But my left pec is bigger than my right pec. My right bicep is a little bit bigger than my left bicep. And... I do find that I get a lot more back engagement on my left side um, if we're looking at the latissimus dorsi muscle compared to my right side. And actually, this is tying over a bit into my performance. Not loads, but I do find when doing um, overhead pressing exercises and bench press exercises that my left side always reaches the top first before my right arm. So what I mean is like if I'm pressing a barbell over my head, that my left arm will just lock out first before my right side. And I'm not sure... It, this might be an excuse, but I'm not sure if that's because my left arm may be slightly longer than my right arm. But it does feel a bit weird, though, that my pressing is stronger on my left side than my right side. My pulling um, is actually stronger on my right side than my left side, although I have more muscular development, in my opinion, on my left side, although it's the weaker side, and if we're just looking at pulling. And then with biceps, again, my right arm is slightly more developed than my left side. And when thinking about triceps, I always seem to feel... Um, if we're talking about mind-to-muscle connection, my right tricep engage more than my, than my left tricep. And you guys, I'm sure, will be experiencing this kind of thing, and that's just where you may feel one muscle group more than another. It shouldn't have too significant an effect on your training, but I would advise doing isolate, isolation exercises where you do one side of them and body can, um, at one time compared to the other side. So you may do overhead one arm extensions on the tricep on your weaker side for more sets during a session than the other side just so you can get more volume on that one side. And to end off this video I have got two special announcements. First one, I'm going to be starting a double A podcast. I've been experimenting a lot with my YouTube schedule and my thought now 
is that on a Monday, I'd like to do a Lean Bulk Physique update video and show you my progress with my training, making that video entertaining and informative. Wednesday, I'll do a video which is a lot more informative, answering a question or a problem to do with weight loss and dieting that people have frequently been asking me on YouTube and on social media. Friday will be a live stream, again addressing a topic that you guys would like me to talk about or something that I've seen crop up in the fitness and diet industry. And then finally, Saturday will be when I upload the latest episode of my AA podcast. They'll also be talking about diet, nutrition, fitness, but will also be looking into the psychology behind sport. Sometimes talking about mindset, goal setting. I'll have a few people on there to do with my Christian faith. So the podcast will be about sport, but in a much broader sense. If any of you would ever like to be featured on this podcast, then please do let me know. Perhaps you feel very strongly about a certain topic, or perhaps your current job role you're in will be really beneficial on one of my podcasts that you can talk about. Say, for example, you're a counsellor. I'll be really interested in having you on so you can talk about mindset and cognitive behavioural therapy and things like that. That's just one example. Or if you guys would ever like to call in, to be featured as part of a podcast or if you'd like to send me a video clip to include in a YouTube video I'd be very up for that as well. People who watch my channel aren't subscribers you're part of the AA family. Second special announcement a great friend of mine called Ingrid is an upcoming singer. She's really talented. She uploads videos to YouTube and she's going to be doing more concerts in her local area. But she's building up her presence on social media. So she's in the music industry. And she recently uploaded this video. I'm going to leave a card link to the video just here. Please do go and check it out because it's really well made and her singing voice is incredible. Go and show her some support. Thanks again for watching the video. I really do appreciate your support. It really does mean the world and it's very motivating when anybody ever messages me just with a question about diet or whether they're just putting a supportive comment in the YouTube comment section for me. Thanks again, have a great week and I'll see you guys in my next video.